early, but that is quite the case for me and Rude, dude. Quite, quite punctual blokes we are. Yeah, we are. Part of these, you know, part we're always of our, the first ones in, aren't we? Of the ratified, ratified constitution of being part of the United Kingdom. You know, we're always on time, with a cup of tea, ready to go. LDLC descending onto the rift now, hand in hand, as they slowly part ways as we get into the lane assignments. And Yike, as a jungler for me, this split route, I think it would be fair to say very impressive, able to generate these leads, go for these clears, inventive pathing, able to, you know, just, just really trade tempo in a way that I've not seen a lot of LFL junglers do. He continues mm. to be very impressive in this league for me. I'm interested to see how he goes against Kareem. Kareem's a jungler for me that has benefited a lot from early skirmishes. He kind of needs to not necessarily flip a coin, but definitely generate some, some odds in his favor via just these skirmishes early. Whether or not he can do that against someone like Yike, who is, by con in contrast, quite controlled, quite disciplined, doesn't necessarily need to go for anything that doesn't need to be gone for, that's going to be a real stylistic matchup for me. But in regards to other things in the game, Rude, dude, what are you looking forward to? I'm interested by how this bot lane matchup is going to play out. I expect Exekick and Dos to absolutely slam this bot lane. Um, this is like their this is their 2v2 they didn't really receive any bans they didn't particularly get anything taken away from them they just got pure comfort i think this has also been a really shining point of the ldlc team in general uh, i think that just the power that x kick always brings his late game team fighting is really good his laning has been brilliant as well yes she has the it's... highest cs per minute in the league well there we go there we go um thank you uh, stats ba backing me up uh because if an Aphelios gets to a late game, we know that he can be a late game monster. I think that that three item spike is largely unparalleled by the majority of ADCs. You know, you can argue Jinx is in there, but outside of that, it's fairly scary what this marksman can do. And you can see just willing to play at the, the brink of the maximum, really, of what an Aphelios can do. Always looking to utilize that sniper gun for poke onto his enemies. Wants to make sure that he's utilizing the range advantage Aphelios gets and, and try and punish, really, at best as possible. Talk to me about Nuku, because he's someone that you've kind of given quite a few shout outs to on broadcast. You talked about how you've been relatively impressed with him coming in as a rookie in, in this in this uh, center fold that we have in the LFL. It's an go for an extended trade here. It was quite even both ways, though. Yeah, I think that, that Nuku is somebody who uh, I, at least at the very start, have imagined as a very good carry player, has, you know, pulled out the Akali multiple times already, played a Gwen game as well, I believe, and has looked very good on pretty much everything that he's played. There's a tendency for him to get a little bit caught out in the late stages. We've seen it, I think, twice in one game uh, from last week, where he was just a little too overextended and definitely got punished. I think that him with this Aatrox, right, giving him counter pick always seems to me a good idea for Go. He got it fairly early on in the draft this time round, but they did get a couple of counters, a couple of answers that they wanted. Um, but I really like the way that this guy plays carries. I'd like to see if he can perform. And I think that up against Ragnar, this is actually the, the the hardest challenge that he will face in top laner, sort of stonewall top laner in Ragnar. I'm excited to see him play against Agenda as well to see really where the level lies. Because I think for Go thus far outside of Game Ward, their strength of schedule have been fairly good. Um, but uh, I'm certainly excited to see what comes next or new Q with uh, obviously a bit sterner opponents yeah completely i think you're right with in regards to goes schedule they've been you know they've been tested before they obviously have that loss against carmine court which was not a, not the most pretty of affairs but they also were able to take away that win against game ward and we spoke about in the lead up to the game how this is very much a testament to where do they actually sit are they real contenders for these top spots or are they kind of sitting in that three to four spot. LDLC very much coming out, charging through the gates, dominating every team. Even some of the lower down teams, the way in which they do it is so, they never give a chance to the opponent. They don't make it look, they make it look very, very clean is I think, and very clinical, I think is the, um, is the way mm. to describe it. And I, I'm interested to see, but not it's a similar case. You see Yike right now, doing the same as he always does, all clears. Doesn't go for the ward that he normally gets. You normally see him when he's clearing in this direction. Ooh. You see Yike clearing towards the top side and then full clearing and then getting that ward on the second spawn Krugs. Doesn't quite do it here. I think he was marred slightly by Kha'Zix's quite slow clear. About 330 or so. You can actually do it quicker, but you know, I'm nitpicking at that point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, right? Kha'Zix I'm one of those. I'm one of those. Clear. I'm one of those people, Rude, dude, that like, I'm not a good player, right? Like, I keep masters. 
But like, oh, I will okay. sit in practice tool and like perfect the clear, so I have like a really fast clear, just so I have like something to say, like, oh, you did this wrong. You know? That's yeah, like yeah. how much of a, like a facetious little nitpick that I am. Just giving you a little see, bit of character on myself. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I've come to learn that about you regardless, but I, mean, I appreciate you telling the people as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to be honest. That's true. Uh, I, I appreciate that one. I think that for Yike uh, and his early game style, obviously the Kha'Zix does get, he does get better as the game goes on. He's a champion that wants to hit level six fairly quickly, and you can see that he's, he's really trying to facilitate that. Uh, getting pretty much all of his camps on the spawn. Looks like knowing that the straight goes down, he'll be able to steal away a Raptor camp. So obviously Kareem costing himself a little bit for the greater good of the team, for the greater good of a little bit later on in the game when that soul becomes to be so prevalent, so prioritized by Go and by the rest of the team as well, by LDLC also. Does cost him, like we say, his Raptors and potentially his Krugs as well, though that may be a little bit too much. Nah, with, yeah, he does have mid prior. Yeah, gets that blast cone over the wall. He gets a camp, so Kjorn, it's not too bad. Level six like to come through very soon. And then uh, the question becomes, what does he evolve, right? The the combat Kazixes will often go for a Q evolve. The more team fight centric Kazixes will go for a evolved camouflage. Make sure that the team fighting is a lot better on a Kazix. Obviously, when you're making sure that you are sort of difficult to kill, quite hard to track down, that ulti evolve can be very terrifying. And I think that unanimously, W second is the way to get it fixed. Yeah, you get that poke as well. Obviously, when you get Shereldas as well, gives you a lot of a slow, even more utility in that regard. This is exactly what Yike wants. We spoke about it's only been six minutes or so. This is kind of what you want. Slow controlled game. Obviously, Kareem in response was able to get that first dragon. Nice little return for that, but controlled game from LDLC so far. You see them start to build up advantages in the mid lane. Priority. I'm intrigued by new Q's. Built serrated Dirk. A serrated wow. Dirk. To Lips? start out the... Yeah, I imagine this is Eclipse. Uh, you know, that's probably the only Aatrox mythic that... Or the only mythic that Aatrox would probably get away with. Potential for, you know, the... the, 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 the uh, Dust Blade or Prowler's Claw, but... Very highly doubt that. And this is something as well that we're looking at on screen right now. It's like not here. Very well. This is... Uh... <laughs> Quite presumptuous of LDLC. His double bomb does come out, doesn't stun up anyone. Yike does get stunned eventually. They are going to get the blue buff though. Ika goes forward, Wagnerim dodges out. And even with a numbers advantage, that is still a blue buff for LDLC. Against the odds, um, yeah. I mean, they see Exa kick bot lane and they're still not forcing the fight. This is, I suppose, a little bit of a drawback that Go are having that without Nuku there, they don't particularly have an engage source, right? You've got double bomb potentially, but. That didn't quite land. You could argue Ronaldo can be that front line that can go in, but it's not too easy to just throw your face at them, especially as a Silas, and expect to get away in the face of three people. And if you do go too far forward, if you are disjointed in your engagement, that's when you're going to really struggle because that's when a Kha'Zix is going to start to shine. Okay, Last time we saw Yike on the Kha'Zix was during that EU Masters semi-finals, I think, against AGO Rogue from the Ultra Liga on quite a performance there. That was more of the Cruiser Kha'Zix that we're used to seeing in competitive at least. It's not quite your Assassin one shot. It's more of the Gore Drinker, Black Cleaver, Death Dance, goes in, gets a bit of durability, able to do his damage, consistently thwart and create space. It's going to be more the case that he's doing a similar job in terms of just you know, finding the, not necessarily being a primary engage tool, but creating space for Exa Kick, allowing him to do his damage, getting in and out, applying a bit of time. And that's, that's, you know, largely what, what we can expect to see. Have to see, you know, in the team fights where we can execute on that. We expect um, that he will. We're not uh, by any means berating in any way. But now what the teams are going to look towards is that Rift Herald. You can see that Go have already started up. Vagnum has made his way up first. It means that they've got a bit of control around this river. Doss has to walk in and scout out the area. Sweep are going to get rid of one ward, and now they've got the sort of established vision down. Aldo and Giz is onto forward. Yike. There's a lot of damage in return, but he's gone quite low. Here comes the Ornorn. Ragnar doesn't quite does, manages to get it. Vagnum's gone low. He uses his Ilion all onto Ronaldo, but he's gone low. Yike goes in with an E. First blood for him. Ragnar's flashed out here. Reset is found by Kareem, though. Kareem is low. Can they find him before he gets another one? No, they can't. Kareem gets another one. He's taken out by Ike here. Boss is on the side here. Gets out. Two for two. Thus far, a lot of ultimates were used. Nuku is the one who gets. 
This ultimate, Ooh. he might find Ica as well. Ica's gonna have to flash here. He doesn't do it though. And Yuku gets a third kill in this exchange. It's a big victory for Go. Yep, they get two, or they get two deaths, three kills for themselves, plus they get the Rift Herald onto Nuku. He's going to have time now if he wants to wail away at that top turret. And you look at this and you think, wow, this has gone so well for LDLC. They're able to stall out and they wait until the Zillion ult comes through as well. They get that resurrection and they still go in. They get one off the top, they get double knockup to start things out as well. But it is this reset style of composition with Viego coming through, stolen away our realty and the Aatrox as well. All three on this top side, if they get that Ari stolen out, they've got resets for days. And then Ica here just stays a little bit too long. Gets Q flashed on here, really well played by New Q, and forced down to the grave. Gives them the thumbs up as well for posterity. And there were five plates on the start on that top lane to start off with. There are now one. Yeah, it's a bit of a falter for LDLC. You spoke about how characteristically very disciplined team that likes to bleed out these early advantages. Go team that will snap at you they've managed to do it here they've taken a few fingers with them three kills on the board the rift herald as well building towards that soul now with that dragon acquisition and this is exactly what go want from a game and if new nuke can clear this wave easily it means that this big expenditure onto the top side is going to yield them nothing and uh, you can see that vagnum's also trying to shadow move up to this top side make sure that the aatrox isn't too fearful of his wave I wonder if he's got back to base yet. He actually just went back now. Uh, so he's going to be completing completing his mythic easily. And we get to see what that's going to be. But also, with that extra kill with the four plates, it's going to be very, very strong. The Aatrox mid game is certainly going to come online and come alive. I think that Go in that aspect do want to utilize new Q fairly quickly. I imagine their early soul capabilities are going to be prevalent. Uh, or prevalent. This is a hex tech soul as well. So definitely one that the teams want to pick up. And if they can use new Q as that powerful force in the you know early to mid game phases before he tends to fall off, they could very well find themselves with an early soul with that combat power that can then facilitate them through what we expect to be a slightly more difficult late game for new Q specifically. It's a really important point that new Q gets this early advantage. You've seen what he's able to do with it. In a lot of these other games, he gets those first few kills, then storms through the game. Smiley has to be careful here as Doss is altering off to the sides here. Yike and Ko. They are trying to prevent him from getting some of that wave. Play does get altered somewhat. Still a lot of people down on this bot side, and they may try and translate this into a mid lane play as well. Ronaldo does have the hijack, so can steal away an ulti. I'm not quite sure if Ikers is ready to be stolen again it looks like with the way you were stepping forward maybe it is but complete bot side control for ldlc right now they get the first turret lost in that top side as they're going a bit aggressive and goes on to execute execute has to use both summoners and the ultimate to get away from that wow. and although it yeah. seemed to be the ldlc were making a proactive play on the map but it is actually them having to execute rather having to react to that potential engage from kareem there he has to use both summoners and ldlc slow style not quite benefiting thus far yeah, I hope we can get the, the scoreboard back up again quickly. Oh. So as I say that, the engage does come onto Wagner and he goes into Zillion ult. They don't fancy taking him down and waiting for the respawn there. They just utilize, they just trade their quickness for Zillion ult. Yeah, what LDLC did get out of that bot lane was a lot of camps taken, I believe. They're able to pick themselves up. Uh, you know, uh, yike that slight CS lead that he has. I think that putting that on the board and at least establishing that control in lieu of the Drake spawning, certainly something that they uh, you know, can, be, can be very happy with and can hopefully use to try and continue to make more picks. No quickness means it's quite difficult now, um, uh, but with Wagner not having ulti per chan or a chance, definitely they can find a kill. If we take a look at those items as well in the start of that second, or in, in the window of that third Drake, we expect to see, as we've just seen it in fact, Exa Kicks Mythic come through the same for Yike as well. Once those mythics start to come online, we expect to see a little bit better team fight prevalence. The issue that they're going to come up against is that Nuku may well complete his second item in that window. When two items going into a third Drake fight, he is going to be raid boss status. With the Conqueror available, with no anti-healing coming through from LDLC, they've got a couple of ignites that they can expend, and they will have to to prevent Nuku from just tearing them asunder. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about how much priority LDLC had placed upon this Orn pick, going for the B1. Yike views it as being a very broken champion. It's obviously a champion that they very much like to utilize when they can get it. Down is being banned away there. It's close, but no cigar for Smiley. 
Not quite working out thus far. The lane was going well. The advantage was generated for Ragnar in that top side from the lane, at least akin to the general way you'd imagine it to be played. But UQ is heavily benefited from the gold injection he got from that Rift Herald and the kills that came with it. Dragon now, the, the focus for Go, you can see Kareem just showing his face around the spot side jungle, has got a pink ward to put down if he wants to, a control ward, uh, if you will. But for the time being, nobody too focused on that bot side from LDLC. Yike and Doss moved in, stole away a Raptor camp. Uh, so again, you can see Kareem continually putting the focus of the team above the focus of himself. And hopefully allowing for them to set up for that first reset to come through when we look at the team fights reminder that go are going to focus largely on finding the first kill and then using Aatrox Viego to reset and go off in a fight and continually use those cooldowns back up and available new Q is here everyone's around it is Drake number three not the soul the fight ready impending almost for both these teams remember go don't have great buttons to engage but on the flip side, LDLC, if they want to force the fight, they can use Ornhorn to do so. They're quite low here. Yike is over the wall here. Doesn't quite have the vision to suggest. Look for him to go, but it's not going to be the case. Go do manage to take that third dragon we spoke about now. Staring down Assault. Kareem goes in now. Can he find the reset onto Ike? Yes, he can. Ike gets caught once again. Ornhorn comes out in response now. It's about preparing damages here. Yuki goes on to Ragnar. He's going to be getting Zillion. Bomb. It's another reset for Kareem. Ike. Well, out again by stuns here and it means that not only do they get the dragon they also get two kills beautiful stuff by team go starting out this game very nicely they are now one drake away from that hex tech soul which is so powerful through the late game now have a look on this spot side you can see that uh or for the time being right this is that little mini engage Kareem finds a quick stun but there's nothing too committal about it it's this bot side that I care, I think, here has got such a good angle to get in. It's just the lack of information for LDLC. Go do a good job at just snuffing out any vision. And then Ica walking in like this, I think he's absolutely fine, but it's when, unfortunately, he gets caught up as his team engages on this top side. They see Mewku, but it's Kareem starting off with the flash stun into a flash ever for, into just an Everfrost, actually, from Ronaldo. So Kareem finding the pick that starts it all off, also finding that charm beautifully onto Ragnar, prevents his disengage. Kareem really just MVPing that fight. Yeah, we spoke about how dominant he can be on this Viego if he gets that early skirmish off. Sorry, saw him do it in previous games. He's doing it very much in this in this game as well. Managing to find a lot of dominance, a lot of prevalence as well in these skirmishes. Ika ha sorry, not Ika. Yike has quite the lead in that jungle with the farm. He's gonna be moving towards a second item now. Looks to be the black cleaver potentially. What has it yielded them? Thus far, Yike in these team fights has been less than influential, hasn't really found anything. It's been the the slight pick approach, I guess. They haven't really looked for the team fights necessarily. You know, Ornhorn has been used more disengage focused, and they in that fight around the dragon focused on trying to take down the mid-tier one as opposed to actually going for the Drake. Rift Herald did get picked up and secured off the back end by LDLC, and now Doss is just caught again. Doss is going to go avoid a bit of damage, but ultimate comes over the wall for Kareem. They find Doss. Yike has to flash out as well. Another pick for Go. Yeah, I say again, apologies. It was the first time Doss has died, in fairness, but it's these picks, these constant little overextensions by LDLC that have cost them. We're, we're building up towards this Drake soul again because I think that it's incredibly important. It's worth mentioning that this could well just be a game-winning buff. It could be something that sets them up, not necessarily to win the game in its own right, but sets them up to take the Baron, which then sets them up nicely to close out the game. Still very few turrets secured for Go, as LDLC actually just find a quick... Like has found Ronaldo. ...takes yeah. down Ronaldo. And they'll take that every day of the week. A stave off in pressure, set up nicely two minutes before the Dragon. They should be able to get themselves control and make Go's life very difficult for the next 90 seconds. 100% on this some of the pressure alleviated somewhat. Ultimate does come onto Bygroom. He doesn't have the ultimate available. Uh, flash, sorry, not Flash. Ultimate from Exekick is going to secure that. And at a turn of a knife's edge, they will see find the needle in the haystack. They get two kills. I'm going to be able to get this Rift Herald in the mid. He might even be able to go for the tier two here. Yep, quite right. Uh, this oh, go! Oh, it's oh, a no. massive flash forward from Ica. They find Smiley as well. And LDLC, just when you were counting them out, come up massive. Beautiful stuff. Exactly what they needed to do. This is gorgeous from LDLC. Their mid-game prowess starting to shine through. Now Kareem 
not going to find Ragnar. But three kills back. They have taken the mid-tier one. They don't grant it get the mid-tier two, but they get the charge, meaning that's going to go over with a stiff breeze if they get the time to, to put it down there. And all of a sudden, LDLC are back. They've, they've breath life back into them. Spoke about how Go as a team are kind of these... They'll snap at you in a way that isn't quite disciplined, but just really speaks to a level of impulse. LDLC here really showing themselves as the actual snapping turtle of the LFL here. They find this initial pick onto Silas off of a bad base here. And they say, no, it's a first pick. We really need to utilize as much as we can here. They've given us a chance here. See the rotation into the mid lane from Ragnar, opting in for the mid lane rotation. Rather than that wave one, Ragnar gets caught out here without ultimate, means one kill. And now the setup can be made with that Rift Herald that was acquisitioned earlier. They move towards the mid lane here. Smiley steps up a second too early. Yike wraps around here. Ica flashes forward here and just finds the pick of the sentry onto Smiley. It's just gorgeous play, utilizing every little advantage. It all segued off one another. That was the literal domino effect. Now Ica. He might be getting caught here. Stun does come out. He manages to get one more away. Ronaldo wow. finds it. U2 damage won't quite do it though. Ronaldo's in stasis now. Hornhall comes out. Exekick's coming off the side now. Zillionol has been used onto Ronaldo. He's not quite been popped out yet. Exekick getting engaged on now. Ail Force is going to do it right the right second. Cream comes in for Cream. the reset. Boss has come in and tried to CC him. He gets CC'd immediately. Yike is W. Nuku. Nuku flashes forward. Exit kick. Let me go going quite low here. Nuku, what can he find? He can't come up with many answers. It's a, it's a triple, triple. for Exit kick. Smiley got the red buff on him. Yike is not engaging fast farther. And that is the sole stop by LDLC. They've turned around now. The momentum has shifted in their favor. And just as we were asking for it, the full-on 5v5, LDLC use their team fight composition, and even though it looks shaky with Ica potentially getting caught out to begin with, they managed to come out on top. Ica here, yes, a little too far forward in the bot lane. Ronaldo steals the ult, he also hits a godly Everfrost there, and then a charm after the fact does so well, but Doss stalls, he zones away the rest of Go, parts them like the Red Sea, and then Ronaldo forced into stasis. He also gets the or the ulti resurrection from Vagnarum too. And then everybody just leaves him alone. He's trying to find somebody to target him. And the second that Exekick gets the lethal damage, the ulti wears off. Krim gets this one reset, but he gets immediately blown back up. And New Q goes for the Hail Mary, goes for the God play, but Exekick snuffs it out. He spots it and says, I can sense that you're going to flash on me. I know you're coming for this kill. And he prevents it coming to fruition. If that kill goes down, there's a chance New Q resets and kills everyone. But Exekick, beautiful spacing, stays alive and secures the dragon. That soul win condition that Go had spent so long building towards stymied at the last minute. I mean, definitely. We speak about preventative measures there towards the end. You really can't help but shake the feeling that Go, this didn't have to play out this way for them. They had very strong control on the game. And one small mistake just completely, you know, Butterfly effects into the game state that we have now, where LDLC have clawed themselves back from the jaws of, well, downfall, differential downfall that Go was putting onto them. Now LDLC find around this barren area. What does this game look like now for Go? Uh, it, you know, it still looks okay. I, I'm going to say okay as a best, because I think that their composition uh, it is going to obviously struggle a lot later on in the game. I've already touched on the fact that Aatrox doesn't have the greatest tools in the late stages. Fortunately, has Zillion to circumvent that to a certain extent. Uh, because Aatrox's issues in the late game, to touch on those, that he gets kited very easily and is actually a fairly short-range bruiser if he can't get resets, can't find flying angles. What he does have is Zillion to give him an absolutely ton of movement speed. And then he can try and close the gap through that way instead. Which is that, like I say, circumventing measure that team go have got for them and i'm maybe a little caught out but he's actually going to be fine to walk away the rest of the team for go uh, do actually scale fairly well the viego in the late game actually very terrifying with those resets silas can be very scary very difficult to take down as well and then ezreal needs no introduction the ability to also just use a zillion ulti and essentially get a 6v5 also something that goes goes way but what they're up against is a great late game team fighting ADC in Exekick. We saw him there with the presence of mind to go, I don't want to step into an Aatrox who at that point is like 1.2k units away, but knows exactly what is available at all times to take him down. What do you think about the Kempunk Greatsword being fully completed on Yikes? I've never seen this before. 
I love it. Uh, I actually adore it. We look at the healing that the entirety of Gogot, they have triple conqueror, four quadra conqueror users, all going to be sticking, uh, you know, healing down in their own regard. Silas has his healing. Virgo, Aatrox have all got healing innate to their kit. I think that it's a great second item to come through for. It's what it's also the champion that's probably going to best apply it from LDLC because he can just one spike and hit up to five members if it's, you know, perfect value. Uh, as, as a second item goes, and in terms of what he's looking to achieve with this Kha'Zix, it's always going to be um, more, I, I don't want to say supportive, because that's not the way Kha'Zix plays, but it is more annoyance factor based, right? He's never going to be the one diving in trying to solo 1v9 carry. He is more so just making things difficult for the enemy team. If we want to talk about items, it's uh, would be remiss to mention anyone else. But well, extra kick, but this is going to be the engagement. Now, Vargan is forced to use his ultimate on himself for around the eighth time this game. Has to flash away from the spikes there. Another quite snappy engage from LDLC as they do catch out. I think, I think they're experiencing some, in, some infamiliarity with how to play against a, a zillion. Right there, they could just kill him. They had five members around and kill him on spawn again. Um, yeah. They let him live that time round, but I think that they could probably try and chance their arm a little bit more with those. Yeah, it's interesting to me. They seem to be letting the passive wail out. I think it made sense the first time they did it slightly because they mm. weren't sure where yeah, the members yeah. are. I feel like, once again, it does owe it is that kind of thin line between LDLC's discipline and LDLC's lack of reluctance to go forward. Doss finds an engage now onto Cream. Cream's low. Cream not going to be able to opt off much for this fight. Baron does go down. Smiley flashes, uh, not flashes, he's in here, sorry. W not onto multiple members here from Yike. Return engage. That soul is spawning in now, 15 seconds or so. Kareem is very low, but they do have position on it. Ornol is not available for around 30 seconds or so. Go want this. They need to get it now. Yeah, there's no Grumpy that's trying to sustain off of Smiley with some good initial poke damage onto Yike. This is when you want Smiley to rain down damage to items. Miramana completely, he has to be that poke much. Look at Ronaldo. Ronaldo's Stun. got a great flank angle. Got to try and burst it. Yike has to use ultimate preemptively. And this is going to be your soul for go. It. A big victory for them. Baron does go down, but they secure that ever so crucial win condition they've been building since minute six. And it's a trade then here. There was so much being used by LDLC to secure the Baron. They didn't have the tools to contest the soul. Go position wisely on their retreat from the Baron. They constantly have first move on the dragon. And now if LDLC can't do uh, some you know substantial damage with this Baron, it's going to be Go who have that permanent buff moving through the game. We're also going to come to a point in about four and a half minutes time where we have that baron dragon overlap that dreaded decision making that you need to know where you need to be and when ldlc starting out by taking down some of the turrets that they've not been able to claim so far this game they've got two turrets in the mid lane which means there's a lot of economy gold out on the map for them with two turrets in both the side lanes to be claimed yeah absolutely i think pretty classic play from ldlc here wouldn't be expected to see anything else want to note is that Ragnar is rotating into that mid lane so they do have a mid lane wave to move to after go contest this next top push but slow and measured here you get much more than this tier two top no i don't think they need to go for too much more they should just like i say be that be that economy baron be the money gainer for the team and then try and contest around an elder fight that is sort of impending silas is getting stopped here by orn from entering the fray like his... and they've got two cannon minions as well right now, so they're able to do the line share of the work. Next kick goes in as well. It's engaged on. Ornold comes out. He's found a very good angle here. Ornold does come out onto Vigner and resets could be found here. Right goes low. They've not managed to find him. Though. Execute's going low. Execute's going absolutely massive. But, but the Zillionol has been utilized here. Kareem is low but can't find a reset. Drake is doing a lot. Ronaldo goes in, goes into stasis. Can they find Doss when he comes out? Nuku doesn't find the angle. Ronaldo's found it though. Here comes Nuku. Here comes Smiley as well. LDLC have been routed in the top side. Ica Hughes in the wrong direction. Oh, he's the gate. Oh, oh, oh. He's get out of there, but. Is he? They're chasing. They're chasing him. He doesn't have any mana. Caught here. Gonna he is. He's going to go down some way. He over the wall. Smiley will do it. Yike may be able to find a quick pick on the back side, but a four for two overall. It's LDLC that are routed in the top lane. The Hextech Soul does so much work when you take these long engagements. Engagements that Go are going to be thriving with when they've got the Zillion in the back. It takes so long for LDLC to get through just one member because there's a resurrection. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of zone control being placed down by Go with those zillion bombs with everything else being launched. 
This is a, a very tight game. It's one where LDLC have been, you know, were largely losing in the early stages, right? They got three Drakes taken away from them for not too much on the flip side. Then all of a sudden they exploded in the mid game, came out and got three consecutive back-to-back -back picks, set themselves up for a Baron, but weren't able to translate that into stopping the soul. And now this soul is proving to be such a crucial combat factor in all these fights. A little C definitely paying for the sins of that early game, giving away so many dragons. They are circling here. Ronaldo has a very good angle once again. Exegate does have flash, but they're trying to find him off to the side there. Smiley does have the Zillion ult onto him. Ronaldo's gone in huge here. Kareem finds the reset as well. And another flank angle means another victory for Go. They're going to get a third kill onto Ragnar here. Slow's coming out from Vikram as well. A disconnect here between the main flank and the side here. Iker and Yike. One's off the side here who tried to burst out Smiley, but that Zillion ult doing so much for Go and their chances. Just too strong. The Zillion pickup is really making the difference here. Iker and Yike, they can't defend this. It has ultimate here, but he's been stunned up. Ezreal ulted as well. That's going to mean another tier, it's going to mean a tier two turret for them. And that gold economy that we spoke about, Rude, did about how they needed to use that Baron to get it. As we come to around two minutes or so, the gold is now in favor of Go. Yeah, or, I mean, and that is sort of showcased, right, in the way that the game has played out. We were saying if LDLC don't get a lot of gold with that Baron, they're going to struggle. Well, guess what? They got two top turrets and that was it. They're struggling right now, Don Jake. They've got very little to say about how these games are being played out because Go routing them through the bot lane there, finding three kills on the bot side and the continual struggles are here for LDLC. They're finding it incredibly difficult to take fights to make plays because go are just stepping to them they're the ones that are saying it with chest and going okay well i'll go for the fight Stoss onto ronaldo goes into stasis immediately it comes to teleport from nuku it's a short one a charm has been found onto ronaldo zillionov comes out but it's not onto ronaldo it's onto nuku on accident he gets taken out nuku what can you do with the reset here ragnar's going low ezreal's climbing a lot of damage here they're trying to get their ways out of here yike is going to get taken down w's not going to do much here comes nuku one more EQ will do it onto DOS. Here it is. There's Ooh. one more. One more onto Ica. Cooldowns aren't quite there yet. Ica has to flash out, though. But still a great fight. And we look at the timing. The Baron just spawned. Yike is available. Ica's there, but they neither of them have ultis. They have to reset. They're going to go back to base and go are going to get themselves a Baron. Crucial, crucial fight for Go. I hope we get a replay because... We get to see something that is so brutal as an ADC, but so fun as a Zillion. Uh, the, the fight goes so well for them. Yes, New Q gets the Zillion ulti onto him, but he makes the most of it. He just steps forward with reckless abandon. He is absolutely loving the life and can just control the fight. Now with the Baron, the Elder has spawned. Can go step down to this bot side, use that Baron buff, use the Hextech soul to take this all important game ending buff. Last I want to point out quickly as well. But quickly, the reason that last fight went so poorly was Vigram got a slow onto Exekick and he got ruined by it. If there's another 99% slow hit in the ADC, there's nothing he can do. Going low, 6k now. Trying to burst this any second now. Ronaldo is on the flank. Ike has come in from a flank position though and the Elder does reset. Being pushed and pulled here. All the space being granted for LDLC now. The Elder is at 3k now. Yike has to go into the pit and try and steal it. Ronaldo finds him over the wall now. Now is first time. Yike is in. Yike finds it! He comes up no huge way. with a steal! And they're all into stasis and LDLC. Yike is your hero. Yike is your savior. UQ tries to find a reset though. The Elder's going to be too They're going in. Ronaldo doesn't have stasis quite. He's doing a lot of damage. They might win it anyway. Yike can't it anyway. Yike has gone and his attention has been diverted somewhat. And go, even though your Elder got taken, they've taken a few of the lives of LDLC. One more key will do it. And stop the game from ending. But Yike, your attention was too focused. I'm trying to find one more member. Your team suffered as a consequence of it. So at the end of the day here, it's a denial elder dragon. We very rarely see these where you get the elder and die anyway. But they stop the elder from going into Go's hands. They prevent the game from just being won from here.
All of this control around the bot side. Yike knows that he can get over this wall on a whim. Ica makes the executive decision to disrupt Go. Goes up straight up to the top side and then immediately Go are confused. They know they're going to get routed if they don't peel back. So they reset. They set up for the Dragon to be on a different line and make that angle for Ica difficult to play around. Able to then go over the wall. Yike hops in and it's that 50-50 that we talked about. But you're 50-50 against the Kha'Zix. That's never easy. He's able to just walk in, takes the smite down, and then two resurrects come through. GA plus Zillion ulti prevent the fight from being so difficult for them. This entire time, by the way, Smiley just takes down Ica. Ica doesn't really know what to do with himself. And then triple knockup after triple knockup here. It's new Q that causes so much hassle. That Hextech soul or is doing too much work Here's in these problem. fights. Ike spends a lot of time going on towards the Zillion, actually, in retrospect, having seen this again. He doesn't really have much of an option. I think this is just him interpreting the change of tides in this team fight. But yeah, you can see that LDLC, even with that Elder, have so much to do in these team fights. UQ is just an absolute monster in terms of the damage he's putting out as well. Yeah, uh, and, and I was concerned about the late game fall off this Aatrox was going to experience. That has just not been the case. And be that largely because of Zillion, be that just because new Q has been playing these fights so extremely well. There's nothing more that you can say for real. He's on to extra kick. Gale forces away here. All not in response. The Smiley's been charmed though, and the Vegar ult's been used. The Zillion ult's been used, sorry. Boss goes down as well. Smiley has been found safely here. Yike goes in. Yike goes in huge. Can he find one more? He still has the Elder on him. Ronaldo goes low down as well. LDLC, they found a victory here in this team fight. And go. You used your Zillion ult, you popped it. Smiley was safe until he wasn't. Yike, he steals an Elder. And he steals away the game from under those noses here. There's just no way. They had no business taking this game. Objective after objective going goes away. And when they didn't, they lost the fight. They won the fights after the fight. But LDLC, when they needed to most, when the fights were most important, they stepped up. Yike with the team fighting. Exa Kick staying alive in the back. And LDLC continue their unbeaten record 5-0 and in one of the craziest games of today.